webinar. Everyone that has made it uh, will be making it here uh, a couple of minutes late and had some te technical difficulties, uh, mm -hmm. but we're here. So having Nikki here, uh, Adria mm -hmm. should be on in just a moment. Uh, how's it going, Miss Williams? Everything is great. Everything is great. Um, awesome day today. How about yourself? Oh, uh, barely make it. Barely made it today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, On them uh, days. <laughs> other than that, uh, a little cold here. Um, mm -hmm. Head cold, I guess you would say. But yeah. uh, we're, we're in here to try to make it happen. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, while I uh, try to get some things up here, I'll throw your mm -hmm. thing up here. You can introduce yourself. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just want to always thank Ty for uh, bringing me a part of the Filipinar. I'm super excited every Thursday to share my experiences and strategies and education I have learned in my 15 year journey um, um, behind this business. Um, my most important thing that I bring to the table is funding and financing. Um, and, you know, if you understand the power of credit, you understand that credit is the gateway to wealth. Um, and what I want to do is bring what I bring to the table is financing and creative options where you can take advantage of leveraging your credit um, to um, uh, receive unsecured credit hard money loans and things of that nature to really go out there and build um, a portfolio if you see that in your future. Now, what we teach each and every Thursday is how to buy and sell real estate with absolutely no money, which is the most lucrative, one of the most lucrative ways to really get into this real estate business. But if any of you all want to take that business to another height, in your real estate journey, you want to start doing your first flip or your second flip or looking for funding options so you can do flip, fix and flip. Just go to fundmynextdeal.com um, and that will give you access to um, all the programs that we have that you can take advantage of. One of our flash year programs, our unsecured gap funding program to help you receive up to $150,000 of unsecured credit um, to help you offset some of the expenses uh, for your rehab or for your wholesale business. Um, I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, um, as you see here on your stream, and as well as um, if you want to email me at funding at fkfinancials.com. Okay, so um, we have uh, some um, folks already in here. Um, so we'll um, see what we got. On uh, YouTube, um, so uh, Solo KK says, mm -hmm. um, I have a, a list of absentee owner properties. Uh, some say the owner uh, is a trustee. What does that mean? Um, the owner is a trustee just mean that the property is owned by a trust. And you um, have to go through the trustee or um, any of the beneficiaries or, or someone who has the power to sign off on that trust to, to be able to sell it. I mean, to be able to buy it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see what's the next question here. Uh, or the custodian. Yeah, um, it, it, it's just another, it's just a structure that they've decided to place the property in. Uh, at the end of the day, you still got a decision maker, right? Mm -hmm. just, just like with anything else. So, um, so you know, the main thing is just trying to get them to respond to trying to sell the property because they sell those also. It's just a, just a different ownership structure. Yeah. All right. Um, All right, let me see here. Um, when using hard, uh, Dave David uh, Lashley says, when using hard money, uh, can I assign a property to myself or a separate rental LLC and use the assignment fee to fund gap or down payment if the numbers work? Sign the contract to yourself. When you buy and sell a piece of real estate and you have a lender involved one of the uh, requirements is that it's a arm lift transaction meaning that that sale has nothing you're not in cahoots with that sale 
um, and it's an online transaction. So not necessarily assign it to yourself, but can you sign it to another company that is not associated with you? Yeah, you can structure your, your deal like that. Um, but be careful on throwing yourself the alley hoop and, and expecting a lender to not catch that because they will catch that. And it won't be a tra on the transaction and most likely they probably won't fund it um, in that case because it seemed like you're taking money out of the pro property before you buy it type of scenario. So be very careful how you structure that. I wouldn't sit in the alley hoop to myself, but I bring, you know, if you want to do it that way, I bring a third party in that understand what you're trying to do. Now, I um, <laughs> back in the good old days, uh, <laughs> yeah. pre um, 2000, uh, late 2007, 2008, I had a hard money lender that used to let me do that. Um, mm. He would let me wholesale it to myself. Wow. And, um, you know, but I was, I was going to rehab the property, but he would allow, actually let me wholesale it to an LLC that he knew I owned. But that's a hard, wow. they were, they were just true, what, what I call true hard money back yeah. then. Because if the property, if, if there was enough, now they, they end up going out of business. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but but uh, if, if the property had enough equity in it, they were going to cover the, the rehab costs, mm -hmm. no down payment, no right. closing costs, just show up. You know, mm. what I'm saying? They, they felt they couldn't lose, but they got they got mm. caught with a lot of loans because you know they couldn't. The uh, their clients didn't have exit strategies because all the all the subprime lending had, had went mm. away, which was a huge part of why that was even possible or whatever. Mm. So you may be able to find somebody out there to do it, but more than likely, no. Uh, just to answer the question. It, it's, that is true. You may be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's relationship driven. Yeah, it's relationship driven. That's like yeah. I say. Yeah, you know. So, um, all right. So, uh, what we got here? Um, uh, okay. So, T Terrell Harris uh, says, uh, "How long can a subject to last? What if the bank find finds out and call in the note?" A subject to is a is somewhat is an approved by the bank, the lender down that covers the, the note as well. So if you do it right and correctly, um, all right, so many different ways to put these things together, but one of the ways is letting the, the lender know that someone else will be taking over those payments, you know, on per se. So um honestly. As long as the payment is made, <laughs> lenders is not bothering you. <laughs> type yeah. of scenario. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so many of those scenarios, but there's so many different ways to put those things together. Um, if you are concerned behind that, just have them to um, um, add you on to the loan where you are able to service that loan as well without the actual homeowner. Um, um, being without the actual homeowner being there. And what's your take on that? Well, yeah, the uh, the do on sale. The, I think it's called the do on sale clause. That's always going to be in effect. You 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 won't read a mortgage that doesn't have that in place. Um, and basically, what what will trigger it if the deed is transfers, you know, from the person that has the uh, the loan in their name. So as as she said. Um, you could make them aware of it, obviously, and you know that just it, it, at that point, it's just gonna probably depend on you get on the phone. In, in reality, because they're gonna tell you, no, you can't do this. So, no, we don't care. You know, as long as the payments are being made, you know, so it'll it'll just it'll just probably vary. But um, that's just one of the risks of the subject too. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna do it, that's just one of the risks. You know, you just have yeah. to look at it like that. Just gonna be one of the risks that that dual sale clause is there. Because uh -huh. even if they tell you. You know, it's okay. Doesn't mean that didn't change because uh, loans get sold all the time. You know, they sell mm -hmm. a package of the loans and the new company that picks up that package of notes, you know, they may not, uh, they may not, um, uh, they may care about it. Let me just say that. Probably won't, but they may care about it. So just understand that whenever you're doing a do on sale, um, I mean, a subject to that do on, I think it's called a do on sale clause is um, yes. always, uh, it's always in play. So, yeah. 
And I, I just want to add to that because you're absolutely right. Um, um, you never know. You never know behind those situations. I honestly have heard of plenty of situations where someone had an owner financing um, deal put together and they're thinking that they're, you know, somewhat in the middle of owner financing that property and then they get a foreclosed sign on the house because the original homeowner was not making those payments. So it's very important that you are completely into that deal and making sure that those payments are made. I don't necessarily like to give my payment to the homeowner because now I'm relying on them to make the payment to the lender. And if they have a bad two to three months and they keep the payments and then you get foreclosed on it, you know, so there's a lot of, 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 of um, you know, moving parts with that. I would just make sure that you know those payments are being made um, as well um, when, you, when you put those things together. You ready? Okay, so probably in conjunction with what you guys were just talking about, and hello everyone. Um, Thomas you. here says they're conf he's confused. What is the point of wholesaling to yourself? Did you mention that? Oh well, the the point well to, for me is what is that? Um, I could okay. They the way they used to do it now. Uh, they used to uh, give you a okay. You would buy the property. Okay, you used to, man, it was beautiful. You you could uh, come to closing with no money, and you will leave buying the property, and you will leave with a uh, a draw for your first rehab. You know uh, your first rehab draw. They give it to you in you know stages. They call them draws or whatever. And so I would get that, and I would get maybe five. You know I wouldn't try. I wouldn't try to be greedy with. It. I was just trying to get ahead of my repair costs and re reality because I'm getting it back in the draw because it's all built in the loan. But the purpose of it was it just was less taxing on me overall because even if they gave you a draw, that may only just cover the materials. That may not have covered materials and the labor, you know, until mm -hmm. the next draw. But then they used to get draws every week. So they, they would – I hate that. I hate that it went down like it did. And mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to – yeah, I was trying to rehab or whatever, and that put a bad taste in my re – I hadn't done one since. And that's been over 10 years ago. So um, – <laughs> But um, anyway, so but my point was, but I but I it was easy for me to find buyers that were just trying to get in the business. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because they were literally financed anyway. If I told them this relationship I had with those guys, if I told them, hey, I'm I'm gonna look out for this person. You know, yeah, they're new or whatever. They were financing. I'm talking. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was wow. just beautiful. Anyway, but to answer the question. Mm -hmm. It just, you, you get walking away with more money from the table or whatever. You, you know, you, you know you're going to make X amount if you flip it or whatever, but you're just getting some of it up, up front, you know? So that's a preference thing. Mm -hmm. and, and this makes more sense if you are going to control the property and fix and flip it. It, 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 it doesn't make sense to you wholesale it. You can't no, wholesale no, to no, yourself no. because you're not taking possession of it. Correct. But Correct. if you fix it and flipping it, it makes sense. Um, to 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 create your your deal that way. Now um, to, I did, to take a little bit of money out of the on the front end. Now I did this on a couple of them. I I actually bought it as I, 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 that I was going to rehab it, but I didn't have no intent on rehab it. I uh -huh. basically wholesale it to myself and then sold it mm -hmm. to another cash buyer that wants. You know what I'm saying? So, but wow. just make it happen quick. Did you take possession of it? I for maybe a week or two. Literally, mm -hmm. you know, then, you know, then I sold it to another guy or whatever. So I did that a couple of times or yeah. whatever. It was just beautiful. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> it was just beautiful. <laughs> I, know, I, I, know. I, I probably sound, I don't, I don't know if I sound that, like, but I'm, I'm not feeling good. Right, <laughs> you have a before we, before we go into uh, anything else, I think enough people here um, get a little update on, uh, on uh deal you later. And, um, want to share that with you guys uh let me throw this up first then i'll throw the other one up let me see um but basically what i what what i've been working on this i didn't really get it exactly like i wanted but um i think it'll still be useful for people so um let me, let me change this over uh but basically now you can go to the site and uh, you still can sign up for you know the tool the prop stream tool or whatever but now you can um, actually 
you go to the site and you can uh, you can actually uh, build your contract right here on the site. I'm going to show it to you in a second. But more importantly, the, to, to the, the things that I get most, that seems to be the, the hardest thing for most people, number one, finding a great deal, but no, no, recognizing a great deal. So I wanted to get a more detailed calculator, but at the end of the day, they just need to do the bad number. So what I did is uh, we re redid the site all together, and then we just put a simple calculator here that I found on another website, and it was simple enough, so we just duplicated just numbers or whatever. And so... So now it's defaulted at 70%, it's defaulted at 250, 35, whatever. So uh, the 70%, you can change that if you want. Um, let me move this out of the way. You can change, oh, nice. you can change that if you want to uh, 65% if you want. So you see the numbers will change here, but we're gonna go back to 70. Just assuming we change this to 200,000, change this to 200,000. And then uh, we'll say the repairs are 25,000. And so the, the price for for somebody that's going to uh, buy, fix, and flip, that 115 will probably work for them. For it. But as a wholesaler, you want to build in your fee. So you say, hey, I want to make 10 grand off it. So it gives you the amount to 105 here. So you can access it at dealulated.com. Uh, uh, the, the contract part of it, you can access it right here, or you can access it in the uh, in the tabs up top. So. I'll go right here, and once you go over here, you can actually fill out that one-page contract that I give away, and it's, it's self-explanatory. You just fill out the fields here, and even I got the uh, due diligence period built into this one where it's not built into the one that you normally have downloaded over time. And so once you do that, you hit generate. I'm not going to go through it because I'm going to do a video on this or whatever and go into a little bit more detail, but uh, you fill out the contract, hit generate, take you to another page. And then you can download it. Now, once you download it, it's going to be up to you to print it out or you save it to whatever on your on your laptop or PC. And you can go over to one of the signature sites, uh, such as DocuSign or Sign Now or something like that. And then you can sign it and you know send it to whoever you need to send it to. So you can actually fill out the entire site. It's mobile friendly, so you can do it on a mobile phone. The thing is that the download part of it on the mobile phone may be um, challenging depending on what type of smartphone that you have or whatever but you know so you know you can do it right here uh on dealulated so you have the calculator now you can also download the uh free contract uh just go here and it says, it says download free contract you still just going to text the word i put a form there but we, we're going to probably change this later so still just text contract to 8338 i mean 439 but uh the main thing is that now you can fill out the actual contract on the site and then the other thing we have the, uh, I have a calculator page, but it's actually on the home page also. So you can just use the actual deal calculator, you know, so if you have an opportunity now. So obviously you have to figure out the ARV. Obviously you have to have some idea about repairs and everything else. And you plug in and say, hey, I want to make five grand on this deal. So, hey, the numbers change over for you. That's, that's the price you need to be at to make that work for you. You know, which these are all ballpark numbers. Understand that it's negotiable. This calculator is more to help you save time than anything to, to, to prevent you from fooling with something that has no chance of being a deal. So just wanted to share that. So when we wow. get a deal or no deal, we have a calculator now that we can offer you guys. And as of today, it is totally free. I don't have any, if, if, if it got more complicated, I'll have to charge for it. But as far as it right now, these two fear, these two services are free. Again, you still can, uh, if you want to use the uh, pop stream tool, when I ever, whenever I do the actual video on it, I'm going to show you why that's valuable when using the calculator for sure. You still can get the five day free trial with, um, you know, the prop stream, which I'm, I'm going to resell of. So, so boom. So daylater.com. So we got the video. See, y'all see, I've updated some of my thumbnails. I hope you like them. I do. Here we are. <laughs> So there you go. So wow, uh, that is um, that's huge. I like that. That's I'm trying, that's trying to help some that's folks. Good. <laughs> wow, definitely take a take advantage of that. That's 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 powerful. Like that. I agree. Next question, please. Okay, so Charles Jenkins and say my name. Hello to you guys too. Obviously, y'all saw me this weekend. Thanks for calling me out. Okay, so let's see here. Someone had asked a question. I guess again, this still 
tagging on what you were talking about a little earlier. Rico the Barbier, Rico the Barber wants to know, do either of you guys think there will be another 2008? Well, I, can't, I can't really hear. That, that, yeah, that somebody, Rico the Barber yes. said, mm -hmm. will there be another 2008, 2009? Yes, you know, times are not going to always be, you know, that, that's, you know, if you go back in history, I think the one before that was like 2000, 2001, something like that. Um, yeah, so um, it, it, that's just the way it is. But, you know, now, now keep in mind now, trans, real estate transactions were still occurring. The majority of people were still making payments on where they live at. It just, it was enough that it affected the economy. And a lot of it comes out of fear more than what's actually happening or whatever. Now I was in, I was deep into it because that was my business, but most people were still getting up, going to their regular job and they were not really affected in the end of the day or whatever. Now people that got into those subprime lenders along those arms that were adjustable rate mortgages. I think I said that right. Now yeah. they may have got yeah. punished because they know may have started at 850, three years yeah. later. It was 1350. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shot 1850. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so that $500, this, this uh, difference can put some people on the street or whatever. So, but to answer his question, do I think that, yeah, it's going to happen. But one of the things I've heard, and Renee Ren Ren can, can expound on it, is that uh, when blood is on the street, buy real estate. Mm, exactly. What movie that came from? I'm gonna mm -hmm. think about it in a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Somebody tell me what yeah. they came from. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Going on to the next question. Newbie to wholesaling in Claremont, Florida. Most of my absentee homes list average is three hundred thousand, which makes me nervous. Does it really make a difference how high the ABG is? ARV, I think, is what we're talking about. Would it make it harder to find a buyer? Not if you can get them for 100 or 150 and you don't need X amount of repair. Not at all. Okay. I can't really hear Adrian. Oh, you can't? Okay. <laughs> well, let me start hogging the what's the name. Then. That's fine. It's cool. uh, you just do like that. I'll do, I'll, I'll do you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> get the mic. Okay. So... <laughs> Pull out your deal, you later calculator. Boom, there it is. Boom. Hey, let's hey, let's okay. put it away. So it. this is for Q Tucker from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Deal or no deal? Two part question. The ARV is two hundred thousand. The repairs are eighty thousand. They're asking seventy six. Well, according to this, uh -huh. uh, we're at 60,000 as uh, before you uh, include your fee, we're at 60 grand and they asking 76. So if you, if, even if you said uh, you want to, to make 2,500 off of it, um, you're still down to about 57.5. So is it a deal? Not at 76. No. Okay. No. The ARV is 200. Yeah, you almost half of it in repairs. Half of the ARV in repairs. Yeah, that's true. Your max price is 140. All right. So there you have it, Mr. Mm -hmm. Q Tucker from Minneapolis. That is not a great deal. I'm it's close. It's, 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 it's close. Like well, he says that he told the realtor he can close within seven to 14 days if the title is clean. Oh. She's wanting to know, should he have done that? No, I shouldn't have is told that what they're to asking? They asking 70,000 or that's what you got them down to? Mm, the, I think he's asking 70. He says the realtor had it listed at 99. Oh. So yeah. It probably... I Chad, I see mm. your comment. You can hear me. Okay. So let's see here. When it comes to lease options, I guess this is what y'all are talking about today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the owner lives in another state. What would be the process when attempting to file an affidavit of equitable interest and a notary is required? It doesn't matter where she signed the property. 
sign the document. I mean, the document can be signed anywhere as long as it is notarized. So basically someone there um, approving that the person who signed in the document is, is who that person is. Um, I, I don't see a problem with um, that seller signing in, in, in another state. And what they're going to do is just um, overnight it back to you and you can file it with the county that the property sits in. Okay. Um, Stax B wants to know, can you wholesale fully renovated properties or must they always need repairs? Okay. That's a really good question. The only thing about a fully renovated property, there's no equity or there's less equity in a fully renovated property. Therefore, no investor really wants a fully renovated property because we buy properties um, pennies on a dollar with a lot of equity in there so we can flip it out and make money. Um, can you wholesale it to another retail buyer? Most likely your, your buyer exit strategy is going to be more of a retail buyer than a, an investor. But a fully renovated property is usually priced at closest to their highest value, closest to the ARV. All right. Let's, um, let's use the calculator here. Let's do this. Let's assume, let's assume that um, um, the ARV is 200, right? Mm -hmm. And the repairs are zero. Mm -hmm. All right. So sometimes, I, now I've had this only happen once. I have had a, uh, a uh, maybe twice. I have, I have had a, um, a, a rehabber and he was just in over his head. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He had finished the project, but he just couldn't wait anymore to buy it. I mean, to uh, mm -hmm. to sell it. Okay. So, you know, what there was nothing old on it. He just wanted, he couldn't get all his money back, but he wanted the majority of it back. So mm -hmm. uh, if he, mm -hmm. you know, in these situations, he had a good deal, but mm -hmm. he just couldn't wait anymore. So if if I if you can get, there's, there's zero repairs on this, right? And say, uh, say you want to make, we'll just say 5,000 on it. All right, just being just conservative here. If you can get around that 135 and it's one fully renovated, then yeah, you know, you could probably wholesale it to another investor that, you know, say, yeah, I'll take that. It's already done. He's satisfied. You got to be satisfied with the work. A lot of times people don't be satisfied with the same amount of work that's done to a house or whatever. It's possible, you know, so, but that's just going to be so rare. Like she said, people have that much invested in it. You know what I'm saying? The price just ain't going to match up to, what mm -hmm. you're going to be able to get it for to just flip it out to somebody quick. And, you know, they just know they can get a quick return. They don't have to do any work on it. They just have to be patient and wait till it, and wait till it sells. So um, it's possible, it's but it's just not likely. Yeah, that's true. But it's just the numbers still, you know, the repairs are zero. There, there your numbers are. You can get it around it. 135 It's a $200,000 ARV. Then yeah. You know, okay, if the numbers work, you know, at the end of the day, if the numbers work, it's just, yeah. Not sure. But if he's trying to sell it for 200, I don't care what condition is in. That's the ARV or whatever. It's not going to work. So if the numbers work, you can get it cheap enough. It, it could be a brand new house. It could be a new construction. If they want to sell it at a discount, a huge, a significant discount, you know, this is the numbers. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Sex B, yes, always contact tyflipman.net, um, any, anywhere, email, phone, it's all listed there. Um, Richard Carruthers, on the contract, when exactly does my due diligence period start? It, it starts when everybody signed sign it. Normally, you sign it first, uh, then I'm sell it after that. So that's when the clock starts. What, what do you think, Renee? Absolutely. When, when, when the contract is executed. Yeah. All right. Shaq Smith from Westside Detroit and Darren actually got here after I did. So I ain't mm -hmm. the last one. Um, <laughs> Kimberly Simpson says, can you explain how you would have, how you would have a conversation with the buyer, Ty being the wholesaler and Renikia being the buyer? Oh, I'm the wholesaler. Role play. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, I don't get to be in the movie. Did, did, did she call you read the question? Uh, you the narrator. Uh, she, she, um, you're, um, uh, uh, what the man named that played in Star Wars, uh, Darth Vader voice. Oh, uh, James Earl Jones. Yeah, you James Earl Jones. Oh, okay. 
anyway, so um, you're the wholesaler, and Renique so, is the buyer. So I'm assuming you calling me, or did I call you, or what? And you probably gonna call me. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I might send a text, but we're gonna, but we're gonna say it's a okay. conversation. Okay. So, hey, uh, now, have we done a deal together before or not? You putting too many. Well, all, that all, stuff, all that stuff. All that stuff matters. New, brand new. Brand new. Brand new. Okay. This is your first. Well, how, well, how I know that she a buyer then? How, how I know? You created a buyer's list from. I got the house. I got the house you want. No, 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 no. I'm the oh, whole buyer. Seller. Yeah, you're the oh, buyer. Oh, you you're the, cash buyer. the seller or the buyer? You're the cash buyer. Ring, 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 man. Let's go. Action. You're the cash buyer. I'm the wholesale. I got the house on the contract. Okay, you got so, the house. So I'm calling you. Okay, okay. Say for instance, I seen your advertisement. So you called me then. I called you. Okay. I called you. All right. Um, Good. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Ring, hello. ring, ring. <laughs> yeah, hello. Okay. Hello. Hey, um, uh, my name is Renikia. I am a, um, a seasoned investor in the area, and I see your advertisement for 123 Main Street. Is that property still available? Uh, yes, yeah, still available. It's still available. Um, how much are you, you um, selling the property for? Uh, right now, I'm trying to sell it for 125 125 is there any major uh, rehab that is needed um, on this property, such as the roof for electrical? Is any um, um, major um, maintenance that you have deferred maintenance or major expenses that is needed on your property? Um, well, it's livable, <laughs> but it, the heating and air, um, I was told that it works, but you know, the power is not on in the property. Um, as far as the roof, um, from my understanding, uh, it's, about six years old, but you know, it was recently lived in. Okay, okay. Um, you say you want 125. Um, is there a way that I could get access to the property um so I could provide you an offer on it? Yeah, I have a lockbox on it. The code is uh 2535. 2535. Okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is get by there um uh, maybe with my contractor and then I'll give you a call back as soon as I leave so we can um um, um talk about putting a, a deal together. Okay, uh, you can receive text messages on this phone? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to text you a video, a, a YouTube link of the video uh, of the property also. Um, you'll probably still be interested, but you know, just save both of us some time, so. Perfect, awesome. Well, I'll give you a call back once I look at the video. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm holding casting calls for new actors and actresses because that was awful. <laughs> 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 but it's really simple. It's a simple conversation. Yeah, Don't overcomplicate it. Get yeah. the the answer. Get the wholesaler or the seller to provide any additional information about the property, and then you ask for access to the property, and then you take a look at it, and then you provide them an offer. And that's it. That's it. Pretty good. Y'all did good. I think they appreciated that. They like that, the, the role play. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that's talking to a buyer is easy because they're calling you in a lot of cases, not always. A lot of cases, they they you, they you want something from you. That that That's always easy when somebody wants something from you. The conversation you need to be interested in is the one between you and the seller. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the hardest. That's the hardest. Okay. <laughs> Get the people what they want. You're the seller. Renikia, you're the wholesaler. Okay. You've driven by the property, you've done your numbers, and you want to see if Ty is willing to sell his property. Let's see if he is a motivated seller. And yes, it's okay. going to be done. Ready? Ring, ring. Who's calling who? That all matters. She's calling you. <laughs> okay, yeah. She's done I am calling you. Okay. her number. She skip traced it, whatever. She's calling you. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello, hello, sir. My name is Reniki. I'm a seasoned investor in your area. And uh, we are purchasing a lot of properties in your, in your subdivision. And your property is up next. So I wanted to see if you are interested in selling your property. Uh, who is this? <laughs> this is Reniki Williams with um, 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 Financial Investment Group. Um, we purchase a lot of properties and we have uh, purchased a lot of properties currently in your subdivision right now. And uh, we're looking for any other homeowners that's looking to sell their property. How you get my number? 
Just say a lot of this information is public. I oh, apologize. Okay. okay, no, no problem. Uh, which house are you talking about, baby? I, I got, I got several houses. I don't. Which house are oh, you? Talking about? You got several. I'm actually talking about one, two, three Main Street, but we are um, um, seasoned investors. And if you look at the liquidate even more than one, two, three oh. Main, you can take those off your head as well. Oh, you talking about that house I own over there, in Holiday Hills? Um, yeah, that house. You know what? I, I had a rent in there, and that young girl, she would never pay me on time. I tried to work with her. Really? And all them kids that just tore up my house. Mm. And I've been thinking about selling. You might be right on time, but I ain't gonna give it away. Hey, listen. <laughs> well, how much you want for it? Well, you call me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to um I don't want to insult you if I start off with the price. So I want to really give you what you want. So if you tell me exactly what you want, we could kind of negotiate from there because I I want to be able to satisfy your interests. Uh, what what, what houses are selling for over there? Now, I, I hadn't really checked on it. I hadn't had it appraised or anything. What are houses you selling know, for? A, a property that needs a lot of work. Um, and, and you know, you, you just stated that the tenant, you know, was tearing, tearing the property up. So I'm sure we got to go in there and do some extensive uh, repairs on that. So, um you know, as this, that you know, they're they're going, they're going for really cheap. You know, I hate to throw a number out there, but honestly, well, they're going well, for. Well, let's do this. Well, as is, I'm retired. When when can when you meet me out there, and I'll let you look at the property and let's, then... let's meet tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> what what's going to be a good time for you? Ten o'clock. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll see you then. Well, what was your name again, baby? My name is Renikia. Okay, all right. I'm With it. financial uh, investment group. All right, I'll be in a red pickup. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll see you there. All right. Fred, why you got to be in a red pickup truck? <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, that was my truck of choice. Okay, guys, so that's <laughs> y'all say y'all like me, y'all put the smiley faces, but really, that is how it goes. And it as really it tells you all the time, Never be the first to put an offer out there. Never, mm -hmm. never, ever, ever. If they ever. insist, give them the most lowball offer ever that you know they they will want to come up. They will want to give you a price because your offer so low. Yes. So either it's like again, and Ty will tell you if you're not insulted or embarrassed to say the price, then it ain't low enough. So you have <laughs> one of the two. Don't give out the number, but if they insist, give a number that's just embarrassing. Just Exes, they would meet the next day. They do a walkthrough. Renikia would assess the property and do it by however many dollars per square foot. Um, she would take a video and she would tell the buyer, I mean the seller, that she'll contact him within 24, 48 hours, make it reasonable, and then um, give him what they can discuss an offer at that point. It very well could happen right then and there if it's good enough and she's done her her homework and she knows what the properties are going in that area. I see she didn't tell him how much the properties in the area are selling for because it doesn't matter. That's not what I'm going to give you anyway. I don't care if they sell mm -hmm. for 150, 200,000. I'm not going to put that in mm -hmm. your head because that's I'm not how in your head and you're thinking, what? No, I'm mm -hmm. not giving you any type of numbers. You're going to have to give me the numbers. You you, mm -mm, you mm -hmm. can't track over today. Not me. Okay. Because mm -hmm. everybody know what they won't take. Right. So. <laughs> right. And so that's that's pretty much it. And, 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 you know, just speaking from the number standpoint, if you say the numbers first, you never know what this person is thinking. You never know how educated they are about the market and, and their property and things of that nature. So you could be thinking 75,000 and she's thinking 40. You know, and, and, you, and you could hurt yourself by saying the first, the numbers first. So never say the numbers first. And like I said, if you do say something, make it as low where it's almost insulting. Okay. Yeah, Linda, it's going to vary. Sometimes it's not that easy and sometimes it's a little harder. She says not that easy in the boot in Louisiana. It, it just depends. I didn't but think I was being easy. You, no, but there's some that are worse and there's oh, some that are Oh, a lot of worse because you get a click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a numbers game. You, yeah, the you majority don't want to sell, of you don't. 
a person that don't want to sell, I mean, if they hang up, they don't want to sell. So yeah, that, they may easy. They save them. you some time, and they save them some time. You know, yeah. the, 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 guys, you got to understand. The majority of people you talk to are not going to sell at a price. Let me, well, let me put it like this. Even if they want to sell, first you got to get them want to sell you, especially if you cold call or something like that. Now, if they call you, it's different. But even with that, the majority of the people are not going to sell at a price that's going to work for you. That is why it is so, so important. You have to talk to a lot of people. All right. Yeah. You know, it just, that is what it is. But you're not selling pencils. Here, one deal is 15 grand, 25, whatever the number is. It, it doesn't take much to change your financial situation and change it quickly. And a lot of times you got to understand people hear your voice. So depending on how confident you are in on asking about purchasing their property, you know, people can hear that, that, um, um, you know, that un uneasiness in your voice as well. So when you speak into these people, you want to sound confident, like you can, you can stroke a check right now. Like, hey, $100,000, here you go. You want to sound that confident um, in, in that um, conversation as well. Um, you know, sometimes you have to reel them in. But my thing is, if a person don't want to sell and they're adamant or don't sell or not wanting to sell, let it go. Let it go. There's 100 properties on the block, on that street, on the next street over. Um, don't, don't try to force anyone to sell. You know when someone's a little bit interested because they'll tell you, well, I kind of been thinking, got them. If they kind of been thinking, that's the one you want to kind of hold on to and reel them in. If it's someone, how you, you know, how you get my number? I ain't, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to sell it. That's fine. Is that okay? I can call you back in about two to three months. Maybe you're in a better place to want to sell. Hmm. And they'll tell you if they want to, if they want you to give them a call back. Two to three months, maybe you in a better mood, or maybe I wait two to three years and I talk to your daughter because it's air property. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> listen Mark to them. Listen to them. They will tell you if they want to sell or not. Verbal cues. Listen. Um, Marcus Beeman from Michigan. I see you. I appreciate you being here, and you have to let go of that fear of talking to people. This is your shout out, homie. Yes. Um, Do it with fear. Do it with fear. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We, mm -mm. we had an acronym for that. What What was it? Uh, you did. What? For fear. It was on the, fear of being it was on broke. Shirt. No, we had fear of being broke, but fear meant something too. Oh, um, Renika. Had you had an acronym for fear on your shirt, right? No, that was fear of being broke. Oh, fear of being broke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's see here. Okay. Yes, Keith wants to know, since you are a Dillulator member, and for everyone that is a Dillulator member, do you still hang or would you consider hanging bandit signs? So I'm going to say you use all marketing strategies. You don't stop one just because you got the other. You do a little bit of everything. What it, oh yeah 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 you gonna yeah yeah that the is, is is a is a well prop stream um it is a great great tool just to just researching properties if you didn't do anything else with it just researching properties and you just having the knowledge of what who you who and what you're dealing with um but uh, as far as the different methods of marketing i think i explained maybe two or three uh flippinars ago um some people that are called bandit signs may not respond to direct mail. Some people that will respond to cold caller may not respond to direct mail. Some people mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, I can keep going around in the circles on those combinations or mm -hmm. whatever. So you want to have as many marketing methods in place as your resources and time will allow. Now, sometimes you have to start out with one and build to the next one, build to the next, but it don't take long once you start doing deals to have a number of ways coming your way. I mean, you know, different marketing methods, you know, in play to generate leads. You know, it's, it's man. Um, people, I'm, I'm a sucker for people calling me and saying, hey, you blah, blah, blah. What did I say? How much does it cost or whatever? <laughs> hey, if I, hey, I might get a shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, 
Don't mm-hmm. y'all be calling to our phone number with no gimmicks and trades because no, 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 no. I'm talking I'm... about generating leads. Oh, I know. I ain't, I ain't talking about just yeah. Somebody gonna call and say they yeah. can call ten thousand people today. You proof. <laughs> <laughs> Man, most man, it's, it's a lot it's of talk out there. Nah, 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 nah. It's a lot of talk out there, man. Uh, hey, yes, I, 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 ain't, I ain't calling nobody out, but I get called all the time. I'm cold called, blah blah blah. It's about a weekend, pound that phone in this real estate game, and they disappear on your boy. You know what I'm saying? You know what it is. I don't get mad, but I, I expect that. So you know, whatever. All right, all right so. I have two people in this chat group that we're gonna address for like whew, for like two three minutes. Okay, so Joe oh, Briggs. Please. Oh, don't those chats still be up on this? Mm-hmm. I, one in the replay. Yeah, as long as I don't close it down. No, no, no. I'm saying after when it when the replay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, so I don't have to do what I'm doing right here. Do no. I can go through and pick. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's still at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so Joe <laughs> Briggs, congratulations. Uh-huh. He says, "Go." He says, "I put out." Two bandit signs, and he has two properties under contract. Bandit. Wow! <laughs> you you like need that. to uh, also go pick up some lottery tickets in Georgia. What state? Of exactly. State of <laughs> two bandit. You got some luck. It's gone. I like that because that says that you can put out a hundred and get no calls, and you can put out one or two in the right location the and right get location. calls. Well, I say that because now I want to talk to about Kylie. Who's put a thousand bad oh. signs out all over the city for oh. over a month period and still hasn't gotten one deal? He didn't say call, mm. but he says deal. Well, we didn't know how many calls are you getting. You done put out a thousand signs. What do they say? Where are you putting them? Oh. I don't even know if I could put a thousand. Well, Birmingham, you know, some cities are bigger. A, a thousand? A thousand? Are oh, they coming right? How many of those thousand are still up? But everybody wants to know what size are you using? What do they what say? Do, what do they what say? Yeah. Are they? Where are you? Yeah, yeah, like, where you put them? I, man, trust you me. I, 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 I'm when, when when I have my my guy on Saturday, um, Big C Clarence. When when I'm driving him around or whatever on Saturday, and we see signs out. The most people now. Don't, well, let me just say this: not most. I'm gonna say about fifty fifty. They don't have a clue what they're doing. And, and I think mm-hmm. a lot of it is they letting somebody else do it, right? And mm-hmm. they don't care about it or whatever, or they hadn't been properly trained. A lot of it is just placement that I see that's wrong. And then some of it's just, they don't, you only have a small area to work with. You can't put that much information on it or whatever. So I always had to ask, what, what your signs say? We buy where, houses for cash. And where are they being placed? What size? 9 by 24, 18 by, you know. He just said they're big. Okay, well, I would love to see that placement, man. Some people have them, they, they're they not in intersections or whatever, or at stop signs or yield, you know, uh, all that stuff matters, man. A thousand? Well, how many calls have you got? Yes. What? Something's not right. But I'm sure you got calls. How many calls you got on that thousand? And I, and I don't see how someone is calling your sign if they're not, if they don't have anything to sell you. So if someone call my we buy houses sign, you either buy houses or you looking for one. No one is randomly calling. So I'm sure you, Ten you know. Calls. Hey, yeah, t- t- All from wholesalers. He does many trips, Walmarts, Lowe's, off expressways. What's wow, it? what city? That, ain't, that, that ain't enough. That what did you said that right there? That let me know how many of those are staying up, and you got right. ten calls. What city are you Jacksonville. in? Jacksonville. Oh, I know Bandit Sign working in Jacksonville, Florida. Absolutely, me too. I, I got a student down there. I, yeah, me too. I ain't no Jacksonville, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, ja- Jacksonville. It might be a Jacksonville, but Jackson, Mississippi. What you talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah. Jacksonville is what he said. So I- Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, I don't know. I know they work down there, but I don't know nothing else. Mm-hmm, me too. <laughs> Hush. <laughs> I don't know. I, that's, that's weird. I don't. I don't know what to say. I got. I, I, I got a student. Her first deal, uh, down there. Uh, I'm getting them mixed up, but it, it was over twenty grand from Bandit mm-hmm. Signs. And she just, yeah. dis- which I, you know, I'm fine. I don't care, you know, but she disappeared on your boy. I ain't here for him for a whole year. 
saying? It's fine. I'm just saying. I'm just making a point. She got it. But she was in Jacksonville. Um, to the young man who put out a thousand signs. Is there, I don't know if you mean Jacksonville, Florida, another Jackson place. Um, is there a lot of activity in that area where people are really there buying and selling? There's a lot of activity of, of um, real estate deals. Is there a lot of activity in that area? Yeah, how many of them still, it still matters how many of those are staying up too. Now you could put, you could, yeah. I could put a thousand out here and I put them in the wrong area, they coming down within two, three days. Exactly. So it's just like, I ain't <laughs> With no <laughs> He said, I think the I think other I think other wholesalers are taking my signs down in the city. And he said, Florida, and yes, it's crazy out here. So Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that thing staying up that thousand, man. You at, at some point you got to about three hundred, you should have realized, mm -hmm. hey, I ain't doing something right. You that know what I'm saying? Because if they coming down, I can't keep putting them things that they not cheap. You know what I'm saying? I can't keep putting them out. You got to figure out, say, hey, I'm, I gotta do something a little different. Or whatever. If you know banded signs exist in your area, that, uh, and also ahead. implement. Um, since you think your signs are coming down, imp implement the um, postcard strategy, um, ye yellow, yellow, yellow letter strategy, and start just mailing directly to in, in to homeowners in certain areas. Okay. Couple. April, April, it is not just one way to find leads. And no, when you no, put all your eggs in one basket, you're yeah. going to get burned every time. You want to figure out what are the top two, three ways that I could generate leads. Is it having an online campaign? Is it having a yellow letter slash postcard campaign with banner signs campaign? Going out to the real groups. I mean, find multiple ways to get your leads and do all of them at the same time. It may be two, it may be three different strategies, but never just do one strategy. Um, unless it's working. Yeah, that's working, yeah. Unless it's working, you know, it's different. <laughs> okay, so. So we went from two we, signs, got, got, two, got, two got hey, it's a, we, a we thousand. Got it. it's, it's, it. Sometimes there's that fluke. So mm -hmm. we, we just and I'm glad it. she said that because it lets you know it works and it only takes one sign. <laughs> Antonio Johnson has a question about Dillulator. He says, I ran into an issue using Dillulator searching vacant houses in my area. Many of the numbers I skip traced came back. I called them and all the sellers had current tenants. Does it really matter though? Just because somebody's living there? Oh well, yeah, you you have to understand that the, the vacant part of it, the, the vacant part of it, that's that could change in a day. Um it, it doesn't matter if somebody lives there. Now, obviously, a vacant house may be a little bit more. It may, it may be a, a seller may be a little bit more motivated to sell. But at the end of the day, I don't care if somebody lives there or not. If they're going to sell it cheap enough. Well, we'll figure those details out. I, I need to first, number one, see if they want to sell it. Number two, if they're going to sell it cheap enough. The, the main thing is you got the right number. I, uh, uh, hey. So uh, don't don't get hung up on this vacant house stuff. It, it's a it's a way to generate leads. But I've done a lot of deals where either the owner lives there, or a relative, or a renter. Mm -hmm. The key is is that um, also to add to that, um, it's just getting an understanding when you put this property in a contract. If there if there is a tenant in there, you have to get that understood upon your contract. What's going to happen with this tenant? Do you want to keep it? And, and it's a turnkey type of situation where you walk into monthly rental income or negotiate that upon this contract, the, the lease agreement um, is canceled as well. And that tenant has to move out. Like all of that needs to be negotiated, you know, on, upon putting the contract together. Um, because worst case scenario, if you don't negotiate that, and if that homeowner had already told that seller that they're going to honor the lease, regardless of selling it, then you will have to honor that lease as well. So make sure you take that in consideration upon a contract if you want that lease to be canceled if there's a tenant in there. Okay. Um, Renikia, this mm -hmm. is a soccer ball size softball being tossed at you. Hartley Blake. Mm -hmm wants to know what credit score 
Does he need to get funding for multifamily rentals, Ms. Renikia? And maybe just go over why anyone would need funding and how they can get it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, um, when it comes to hard money loans, credit score is not um, it, it's not an issue. It's not a requirement. You can go, you can be as low as 580, 600 when it comes to a hard money loan. Um, so just, just know that it's, it's not necessarily credit score driven. So if you want to get into a buy and hold loan, it's not credit score driven. It can be approved based on the cash flow from the property. So we have a two tier on the buy and hold loans. You, you have the, um, um, the buy, I call it B triple R loan. It's the buy, rehab, rent, and then refinance. So give you the loan to buy, rehab it, and then rent it. Once you get it stabilized with the rental, we'll refinance that into a 15-year or 30-year amortized loan where you can hold on to that property. It's amortized over 15 years, so your payments will be amortized over 15 or 30 years, but it will balloon in three or five years or eight years, depending on what you negotiate. Um, it's not credit score driven. Now, for the unsecured gap funding program that we offer, which is a program to help you receive up to $150,000 unsecured credit, so you can use it to offset some of the expenses, such as down payment, closing costs, points, and things of that nature. Now, you have to have a 680 credit score across all uh, boroughs to qualify for that one. All right. And if you want to, um, if you're a little bit late, because uh, I did do my spill in the beginning, but if you're a little late, go to findmynextdeal.com so you can get access to those funding and creative options. Okay. And as I put on the screen here, my um, Facebook, my Instagram, and you also can email me at funding at fkfinancials.com. You know my screen. I can't even see what's going on. You probably just need to refresh. Nope, not gonna do it because I'll lose it. <laughs> so, guys, on your screen there, I yeah, I can see it now. You should be able to see Ms. Renikia's contact information. You're more than welcome, Mr. Hartley Blake. I'm glad we were able to answer your question. Um, let's see here. Solo KK, I'm holding you to it. Renikia Ty. They say when I make my first deal. I want you to know you people are amazing. All this info is just sitting here to really change anyone's financial situation. And also say you're going to buy us all drinks. Take it. Ain't turning <laughs> down no meals. Thank you. Okay. Let's see here. Next question we're going to tackle is going to be from YouTube and from AO wants to know, do you have to add a contingency clause to your purchase and sell agreement to be able to back out of a deal during the inspection period? The due diligence clause is already written in every contract. If it's not, then a contract is weird. But most purchase and sales contract, there's always a due diligence clause in that contract. So it's not you know, a contingency where sometimes you can have um, it's contingent upon funding, it's contingent upon, you know, lead based pain or something of that nature. Um, it's not necessarily contingent upon, but that due diligence clause is always written in the contract, usually, if it's a full purchase of the contract. From Facebook, um Delane Corp says, I need help on wholesaling land. Is it the same as wholesaling a residential property? Absolutely. It's the same thing, same process. I mean, you may have to do a little bit more due diligence um, um, that you don't have to do with single family because it's a lot easier to um, pull comps with single family and get your ARV and your numbers and things of that nature with land. It's a little bit harder to know um, um, the value of the land. So you have to do go look a step farther to, to get the value of the land. And usually, like we um, always say, um, you can usually go to the tax records or tax assessor site, pull up that property, and there's always a value of the land within the property records in the county. And that's a start to um, getting some type of value to your land. It's the same process. Put your contracts together, the same contracts, 
It's the same process. Okay. Um, Renikia, what is the benefit of having access to, I don't know if it's the same for every realtor, but Realty Track, um, a subscriber has, I guess, negotiated with an agent who's giving them their username and password to get pre foreclosures, but they're not sure how this information would benefit them or help. So is, is that a good thing to have? Could you use it to your, you know, your advantage? Realty track? I'm not Realty associated with Realty track. Okay. It, it's just a tool. It, like Good. with any any of the other services, uh, Zillow, MLS, um, Delate, AK PropStream, it's just a tool. It's not, you know, you could go to Home Depot and load and buy a paint and, and, and uh, a paintbrush, but it, the wall is not going to paint itself, you know. It's mm. Mm. Okay. Um, a realtor asks for a referral form for someone I sent her for business. Um, can a wholesaler complete a referral form? Yeah, why, why not? Yeah, sure. I'm not for sure, you know, what do you mean about referral form? Um, does that mean that you're a real estate agent and you need them to sign a contract or sign some type of document stated in your feet as a real estate agent? That gets, that's in a gray area there, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's a certain way to put that together. Um, but what, you, what do you mean about um, referral form? Mm, it's not sure. Um, but yeah, they can. I mean, the most wholesaler, they have contractual interest in the property. Um, so I don't know if you refer the buyer or the seller and you want them to sign off on some side document, of course they can. Okay. Um, Kiani says, I have a scenario in a house I'm currently living in at the moment and an opportunity to purchase the property. I was the first to make an offer and I lowballed. Um, the details are, so he went in about the taxes, and but she's able to get approved with her credit, but not enough income to pull it off. So she's mm -hmm. looking for private lenders or a co-signer. She wants to know, would mm -hmm. I be able to get finance through funding key, financial key, if anyone is interested in, that's something else. So I guess in her scenario, would um, fund my next deal? be something that could help her or no? Um, I mean, it all depends on the numbers. So if the numbers make sense, absolutely. And what, what, do, you, what do you want to do? What are you trying to hold it or you want to buy it to flip it? She's trying to live in it. Sounds like, sound like she's trying to live not, in it. We don't do homeowner. We don't do owner-occupied loans. We only do investor loans with an LLC. You have to have an LLC as well. Um, so... If you wasn't trying to occupy it in the numbers make sense, yes. Um, but if you're trying to occupy it and you went to a traditional bank and they said that your income wasn't enough to handle the monthly payments, then, yeah, that's just what it is. So you may want to, um, um, it's not like you, you need more of a traditional bank. Um, you, need, you need more of a traditional loan, a regular FHA mortgage or something of that nature. Um, sometimes if it, if it financially don't make sense, it just don't make sense. You don't want to get yourself in a, in a, in a bond where you want to qualify for more than what you can handle. Um, yeah. All right, guys, on your screen there, you shall see dealulator.com. If you have not already made it a part uh -huh. of your tool chest in wholesaling, I would suggest that you take a look at it today um, and possibly subscribe to that service. There is a five-day trial period, um, but even just going to dealulator.com, there is a calculator. A lot of you guys always ask about the ARV. And what do you mean by the 70% rule? And is it a deal? Um, it's a calculator there. Plug and chug. Plug your numbers in and figure out how much you want to make or how much you expect to make off the deal. There's a purchase and sell agreement that's on the screen as well. 
um, that contract, fill in the blanks. Tired makes the contract available for you. He just made it easier. Just fill in the information and download it, print it, save it, whatever you got to do. Um, but guys, I never really mentioned this, but I want to call your attention to that. We have 162 people watching on YouTube right now, but we only have 28 likes. Are you kidding me? You don't like me? Mm -hmm. That's hurting my feelings. <laughs> so if you could, uh, guys, always just know that we're here. Ty is providing this content. Ms. Renika is chiming in from Atlanta, GA, and giving you all the business on wholesaling. The least you could do is at least hit the like button. And whoever put that unlike button, I'm not going to call you out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the channel and make sure you have your alerts on because we'll be here doing the same thing next week. I love you too, Shaq. What you want to see my face for? Here you go. Huh? I can't. Hey. Move. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, I'm in the mic now. So, again, uh, this is the 98th. Flipinar 100 is approaching rapidly. That 100th uh, Flipinar, not exactly that one, but one shortly after, we will be doing a live in house studio event in Atlanta, Georgia. So stay tuned for more information on that as well. Um, again, we're here every Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. The beautiful Miss Renika and the handsome yet sick. Mm -hmm. so let me back up. Hi, <laughs> Taylor. Is you got anything to say? Oh wow, really? So, uh, <laughs> Portia Franklin, it is May 18th in Atlanta. Um, more details to come. More details to come. What do you mean? Oh, well, I said like button, but the thumb up, thumb down button, Jules. That's what I'm I'm speaking of. Yes. And and share it more importantly. Share it. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, the old IG um, Instagram page, there's a new one. If you've been missing it, um, go there and uh, I guess you subscribe to that too, Flipman IG. Yeah, go Flipman to IG. Somebody told me I needed to, but uh, Instagram don't allow you to do caps at all. It's all lowercase. So Flipman mm -hmm. IG, you know what the IG stands for. Yep. So Flipman mm -hmm. IG. Uh, I hadn't posted anything yet. I'm still in a state of depression, so it's coming. No, I feel you. I'm so scared of that happening. From 16 to 54, that fast. Oh, okay. Well, mm. everybody's watching. Share to a minimum of three people. And let's see mm -hmm. how that works, too. Boom. <laughs> the power of the internet. All right, guys. Without further ado, see you next week. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, make sure you catch it on Sunday. Winter is here. Oh, my gosh. Bye. Bye.